Hi, I'm Autumn. And I'm Cortland. This is our 2017 Ram ProMaster High Roof, and it's a 159 mil base. So come on in. Hi, so welcome to our entryway, and this is one of the last things that we added into our van. We added it about a year ago, and I love it because I can put a ton of stuff in here. Like, seriously, my arm goes all the way back, um, and I just have lots of, like, craft stuff, and then I have my skateboard helmet and clothing, more clothing. That's kind of a common theme. As th there's a lot of clothing in this van, honestly. And then this upper area, which is so nice to actually, on a ProMaster, be able to cover up that weird metal rib that is kind of an awkward spot to store stuff, but it just makes the van look a lot more clean and finished having this here. So. Welcome to our kitchen area. So we have these overhanging cabinets, which we store food in, and we also have these spice jars along here. And here's our countertop, and as you see, we don't have a sink. That's because we have a big pot and a big pan, and we just wash our dishes inside the pot and pan. This is our water for washing dishes. And we can serve water pretty well, so that six gallon jug of water will last us a week to 10 days. I, I actually think it's perfect because we have a big pot and a big pan and we just wash the dishes right in it and we don't even need the sink, honestly. It just feels like we don't need it. We also have food storage in this bench right here and in the cabinet here. And we prioritize saving and couponing, and so sometimes we stock up when we find good deals at grocery stores. Here's our countertop, and under our countertop we have storage. And then below that we have a cabinet here with food and kitchen appliances and our pots and pans. And on the other side, another sliding door over here, we have our, our battery bank. So we have uh, two Goal Zero Yeti batteries. Uh, 1,000 and a 3,000. The 1,000 we got four years ago, and the 3,000 we just got this past year. We wanted to upgrade and get a second battery because sometimes there'll be days, shady days, and cloudy days and rainy days, and so we wanted just more capacity to be able to run our kitchen appliances and our refrigerator. I feel like we have adequate energy storage now. We use the Yeti 3000 to run our refrigerator and our kitchen appliances, and the 1000 is for charging phones and our tablet and other little electronic devices. So this is the front of our van, and right now we have the crash pad, which we use for bouldering, rock climbing bouldering, and it forms a nice shelf across from the passenger seat to the dashboard to store things on top. And right now I have the 100 mile belt buckles that I earned from, from running some ultra marathon races. I thought I'd bring them out of storage to show you because the ultra running helped get us into nomadic living and van life. So each of these belt buckles represents a 100 mile running race finish. In fact, this is a 150 miler and this is a 200 miler. Since we're camped out right now, the front area just becomes more storage area. So this is more living area here. But when we're driving, we take a lot of the stuff that's up front and just move it into the, the living room of our van. Before van life, I worked a job where I went nine years without any vacation time. And just the last year of working there, I started getting vacation time, we started traveling, and we realized how much we liked it, how much more we wanted to make that a part of our, our lifestyle. And the reason why I finally ended up quitting that job and we decided to fully commit to being nomadic and doing van life and vehicle dwelling uh, is because there was a threat of an active shooter and management wasn't taking it seriously. And so I decided to quit that day and we downsized, sold our house and started traveling and doing van life. In 2016, I ended up running eight races of 100 miles or longer, and those ultra marathons and just traveling and being out in nature really inspired us to want to commit to van life. We had already been really interested in maybe getting a tiny home or doing some kind of traveling, and that was just definitely a catalyst in the journey of being like, wow, you know, we really only have one life and we really don't need all of this stuff that we have. And so, yeah, we put our house on the market and we actually packed up our eco car and two cats and went on about five to six months of traveling on the eastern states. And yeah, obviously we eventually got to 
this size of a vehicle and that's been a lot better. Welcome to our bedroom area. When you first step up here, you can see that you actually step onto the fridge and then there is a hygiene basket. And then right over here is actually my sewing machine. One of the coolest things about van life is that it's very customizable when you build your own tiny home. So you get to have your passions and your hobbies and like try to find places to make them all fit. And I really like sewing and crafting. So that's where a lot of that stuff is. And then coming back here is honestly tons of my clothing. Um, there's clothes in here, there's clothes in here. Our family members actually helped us with our cabinets so they didn't end up being wonky, which was super nice. Thank you, Mike. Um, and then I think a couple years later, we ended up adding this lower section of cabinets that has obviously more clothing storage. And this actually goes as deep as the bed. So before we installed this area, we actually had this full size bed sideways. Cortland is about six, one and something, and I'm five, nine. And so we could just barely fit laying sideways with Cortland a little bit slanted. And then we ended up making our bed extendable and we kind of just left it extended all the time. So we were like, why are we even doing this to ourselves? We need to just turn our bed the long ways and be able to stretch out. And that's worked a lot better. And then obviously allowed us to put storage here and more storage here. So to keep my clothing and other stuff that's in these cabinets organized, I use a lot of compression bags. And then I made these little, I guess, cubby covers out of an old sheet and I just used a staple gun to attach them inside and also line the wood inside so that my clothing wouldn't end up with splinters inside of it. We really love our bed area. It's super comfy. We have a memory foam topper on top of just a regular mattress and we haven't had any problems with like condensation or mold. We left uh, slats in the bed underneath so that like there can be airflow and obviously like we can totally stretch out. So this is one of our Max Air fans. And this one can pull the air in or out, which is really nice, especially if you're hot and you're trying to sleep. Um, but one of the things I have seen before is uh, people trying to like figure out how to hold these things up without putting lots of like Velcro or other types of stuff on their ceiling. And so I actually was able to take some magnets and sandwich them over the grate of the vent fan and then just magnetize right through these little covers that I made and they stay up like even while we're driving or if it's pretty windy and obviously they block out the light and a little bit of the sound which is really nice. Okay so as you probably noticed a lot of these areas have my clothing in them uh, but these three cubbies were for Cortland and he has mostly clothing but also some hiking stuff like his ice axe and helmet for if he's doing a 14er and he's worried about rock fall. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much all he got, but he's super awesome. He actually minimized so much at one point before we were getting back into the van that I thought he was like gonna abandon me or something because yeah, I was just like, what are you doing? Why is all your stuff condensed so much? And he's like, I have to make room for you. But yeah, that's true love. <laughs> so one of my favorite things about our van is that I have a full length mirror. Obviously I really love my clothes and I prioritize fashion. So I sometimes, you know, look like I live in a van and that's totally fine. But then other times I want to look like I live in a sticks and bricks house and that's also fun. So one of the biggest pros that we found with living our life this way has been just getting to spend more time together uh, before van life and starting to be more nomadic. We really didn't see each other unless it was at night before we went to bed and we were both pretty exhausted. And yeah, we just like, we want to actually be together. Like we're in a relationship because we want to see each other's faces for more than a few hours a day. And this has been so nice just being able to spend every day together. Welcome to the outside of the van. And as you can see, we have the shower bag, the solar shower bag hanging up. So after running or working out or bouldering, can rinse off. We can also hang it on a tree branch, but it does work right here. And then if we're in a city, we have a Planet Fitness membership and can get a shower there. So the back of our van is just more storage. So as you can see, the space is well used and it's because everything we own fits in this van.
Back here we have our two backpacks for overnight backpacking trip. This is my RAV drum. This is a steel tongue drum and hand pan combined. It's a lot of fun to play. So these are actually our old solar panels and we decided to just use them as kind of our backup and we just put them out whenever we're camped and not driving around. They're two 100 watt panels and they're flexible and flexible panels, at least this type of technology of flexible panels can get damaged really easily. So they really only give us like 50 watts now. So on top of our roof, we have 240 watts of solar and they're actually the CIGS type of panel, which is flexible, but uses, I think it's called like copper and dynium something or other, but it actually gets a lot of sun even when it's a pretty shady day. And those have worked amazing for us. I think that we've had them almost a year now and we really love them. We had those hooked up to our main 3000 Yeti. So last month marked five years of nomadic living from the eco car to the first fan that got totaled and now to this fan. And I feel like it's been an overwhelmingly positive experience. But definitely one of the cons that I would say is that even though more people are getting into this lifestyle um, from when we first started, it just seems like sometimes it's still not seen as a legitimate way of living your life. And there's definitely people out there who will judge you or think that you are lazy or you know just don't wanna work when it's not true at all, like tons of nomads have remote work or they do seasonal jobs. And yeah, I just think that it's a different way of living and it shouldn't be seen as something negative. Another pro for van life for us has been more time to pursue our passions. So obviously running is a passion of mine, overnight backpacking trips are a passion of mine, climbing the, the 56 public 14,000 foot mountains in Colorado. Recently getting into bouldering, which is a form of rock climbing on boulders. It's been a passion of mine. Yeah, and I love pretty much art of all kind and yeah, sewing and painting and drawing and had so much more time to do that. And obviously like getting inspiration is a lot easier when you're in beautiful places and we get to park in some of those beautiful places ever. Thanks so much for checking out our van. If you wanna find us on social media, we're on Instagram at we'll go explore, and that also has our personal Instagrams on there. So if you have any questions about our van or just, I don't know, need some general advice, we'd be happy to help you. And yeah, thanks for watching.